Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the DNA, predicted traits, predicted appearance, predicted uh, illnesses based on DNA, and of course GD match results of a Paleolithic, Paleolithic era Epigravetian from Northern Italy. Uh, this individual was, he did not belong to the Western Hunter-Gatherer cluster, rather I, I should say he was ancestral to the Western Hunter-Gatherer cl cluster. The Western Hunter-Gatherers are the Hunter-Gatherers in Mesolithic Europe who descended from an individual like this. Uh, now, Western hunter-gatherers today are extinct. Uh, nobody today is speaking the language they were speaking. Nobody today has the culture that they had. Uh, now, uh, they contributed somewhat to the ethnogenesis of Northern and Central Europeans, and even some Southwest Europeans as well. So uh, they kind of live on through our DNA. We have a little bit of a little bit of ancestry from them. Now. This individual who is ancestral to those Western hunter-gatherers with my Nashakot tool is predicted to have hazel eyes at 44%. He's also predicted to have a, either a Greek or a snub-shaped nose, which is kind of evenly split, uh, which is a similar, similar result to me, so he probably had a nose that's similar to mine. Uh, he had black hair, which is predicted at 39%. Now, if he took a 23andMe, 23andMe would actually predict him to have blue eyes. Uh, on the bottom right of the picture, you see what 23andMe would give him for his eye color prediction. And that is because he had the BEH2 mutation, which is the mutation that 23andMe looks for to determine eye color. He had two derived uh, alleles in all BEH1, BEH2, and BEH3 variants. And my statistic for people who have this genotype, which means have BEH1 plus BEH2 plus BEH3, by the way, if you don't know, BEH stands for blue eye haplotype. So my statistic for people with this kind of a genotype is that they had blue eyes, overwhelmingly blue eyes, at 53% and hazel eyes only at 12%. However, Nashakot predicts them to have hazel eyes. And the reason Nashakot predicts them to have hazel eyes is because of other exotic genotypes in the following variations, which you can look on the screen. I'm not going to pronounce them. They mostly have to do with the genes that have to do with, uh, as besides eye color, also with skin color. Oh, what's severely interesting is that this individual also had two derived variants in the IRF4 mutation that's implicated in ginger hair and blue eyes. And I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is a uniquely Western hunter-gatherer genotype, though, because I've seen a Samara hunter-gatherer, which is an Eastern hunter-gatherer, who had this genotype as well. So maybe it's more ancient, maybe it predates uh, the distinction between Eastern and Western hunter-gatherers. His genotype in DRD2 is pretty typical for Europeans. I'm not going to dwell on it, he's just heterozygous for all the variations. Uh, according to his genotype in Comte, he was a warrior with the IE, which is a very... A uh, very European genotype to have. Basically, the implications of this genotype is that he had a slower reuptake of dopamine, which means more dopamine building up in his system, which means advantage in memory and attention tasks. And the shortcomings of this genotype is that it comes with less stress resilience. He did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely intolerant to milk as an adult. He did not have derived EDAR, so no gene implicated in mongoloid facial features, which means no mongoloid facial features for him. He did not have the sociopath gene. However, another interesting piece of trivia is that he had the European allele that protects against myopia. Uh, this is a very uniquely European genotype to have, and I've seen, I've seen only a couple of samples have this, and they've all been European or had ancestry from Europe. When it comes to polygenic diseases, illnesses, risks, he has a very high risk score for Parkinson's disease, a pretty high risk score for type 2 diabetes, he has an average risk score for schizophrenia, and he has an average risk score for bipolar disorder, and he also has an average, maybe slightly above average risk score for brain aneurysm. This is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. Now, a sample like that, you would expect him to score 100% West Eurasian, right? Uh, but the thing is, West Eurasian category here is based on modern West Eurasians, which means uh, to have a lot of, to, to score 100% West Eurasian, you need to have a lot of modern West Eurasian, modern European drift. And this is an ancient individual, so I think a lot of the modern European drift that Europeans have today, he did not have. This is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Now, he's scoring 90% Western European hunter-gatherer, but on top of that, on top of that, he's scoring 4% sub-saharan african which is fascinating to me and because of this little bit of sub-saharan african the oracle for this calculator is modeling him as a mixture of basically western hunter gatherers with like somali or kenyan people this is what he scores with eurogenes k13 this might be the most north atlantic and baltic i've ever seen anybody score uh, however what is fascinating is that he scores three and a half percent west mediterranean he also scores 
like non-trace pretty significant amounts of East Asian, Oceanian and Sub-Saharan. These are his results for Eurogene's K36. Now the largest categories here are Phenoscandian, uh, North Sea and Eastern European. However, he's also scoring a little bit of the yellow component as you can see. And the yellow component represents Basque. I think the reason he's scoring Basque is because like his ancestral to Basques, like Basques have a lot of uh, more ancestry from Villa Bruna than perhaps other Southern Europeans. This is what he scores with the MDLP K11. I found it interesting that he's only scoring 85.9% Western Hunter Gatherer on this calculator and he's somehow scoring 7.8% Neolithic. So I'm thinking that I'm thinking that this calculator might not have the proper references for Western Hunter Gatherers and Neolithic Neolithic categories. With the Oracle, he's basically getting modeled as a mixture of Western European hunter-gatherer with like farmer, which is nonsense, because he literally predates both the Western hunter-gatherers and farmers. If anything, Western hunter-gatherers are probably more southern than this individual. This is what he scores with Punt DNA LK10. Once again, you can see 84% Western hunter-gatherer. Uh, once again, 5% Sub-Saharan. Make of that what you want. Uh, I'm not going to show you the Oracle. You can already predict what the Oracle is going to be. It's just going to be Estonians, Lithuanians, Latvians for every single calculator that I'm showing you here. Because these are the people with the most Western hunter-gatherer admixture in Europe today. And this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK12. I don't understand why he's scoring 15% Anatolian Neolithic here. The only explanation for this must be that on this calculator, the Anatolian Neolithic is absorbing some of the, the, the category for Anatolian Neolithic is not representing actual Anatolian Neolithic and is instead absorbing some of the Western hunter-gatherer admixture. However, what's weird is that the oracle for this calculator has been very, very sharp. It's detecting him to be closest to Bichon and it's modeling him as a mixture of like Bichon plus some ancient groups like Ustishim or something, I don't know, but it's detecting him to be closest to Bichon, and Bichon is a Western hunter-gatherer, so I guess it's typical on this calculator for Western hunter-gatherers to score 15% Anatolian. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I guess that's typical. Thank you guys for having watched until the end. You can actually download this sample in 23 me format from link, which is going to be in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave comments, suggestions for other videos in the comments, and I will... You know, I listen. You leave suggestions and I listen to them. I make videos because people ask me to make videos.